When we partnered with Two Terrain back in the beginning of 2022, they sent us a couple of their bikes, one of which was this one, the Outback Explore 29 inch. This is their answer to the rigid mountain bike Explore bikepacking market. And I think they've done a pretty good job. We've been riding this for about a year now uh, in locations such as Spain, Italy, Austria, Kyrgyzstan, and most recently Mexico in Baja California on the Baja Divide. That ride was particularly rough and it was a great place to test this bike to its limits. And it was also the place where this bike got its one year anniversary. We've now had it for over 12 months and that leaves us a good opportunity to talk about the bike in detail, how it's kept up, how the parts have worn. And I just wanna share that with you in this video. So first off, let's talk about the frame of the Outback and specifically the coating on the frame. If you've seen the factory tour uh, video of the Two Terrain headquarters that we visited last year, you'll have paid attention probably to the way that the paint is coated onto these frames. They have a massive oven, they do multiple layers. And so the coating on the Two Terrain bikes is particularly strong and resistant to things like scratches, the weather and wearing over time. Now, in my case, the front has finally given in to scratches from my handlebar roll, which I was actually waiting for to see how long it might take. And this only started happening on the Baja Divide track. We carry bikepacking bags, such as the frame bag, the handlebar roll, and then fork packs and gravel packs in the back. And the roll is always really hard on the head tube over here. And the logo actually held up for a long time. Belen's bike still has the logo. It's just looking a bit polished, so to say. This is a, a matte coating and the constant moving and rubbing of the handlebar roll has made her front a little bit more shiny. But in my case, it has scratched off the logo, unfortunately, and exposed a bit of the metal. It's not something I'm not impressed by. I knew that it was gonna happen. I was just wondering when, and it took this bike over a year of constant scratching and rubbing from this bag that I have in the front to expose its inner layers. So I would say that's pretty good. The frame material is steel, so you can weld it wherever you are in the world. And uh, the frame is made in Taiwan and the bike is put together in Germany. So that gives a pretty high quality and a good standard for security of this frame. The most defining part of this bicycle for probably most of you watching is this belt and gearbox setup. Mostly you'll find bikes uh, in the bikepacking environment that have derailleurs, chains, cassettes, the conventional drivetrain setup. But to terrain has decided to bring the Outback with a gearbox and a belt. And they've done that for several reasons. If you wanna know the techie specs behind this stuff, you can go over to Ali Denham's channel. He's done a couple of videos on gearboxes and his most recent video on belts explains a bunch of reasons why belts are just generally better than chains nowadays. But for me personally, I've really enjoyed the use of this gearbox, which is the Pinion C112, because it has a really wide range of gears, which allow me to go up very steep hills and also down uh, very steep descents, because the speeds range from below five kilometers an hour to even up to 45 kilometers an hour, with me still pedaling at a decent rate. And the belt is very, good for people who are lazy on their maintenance, which includes me. Uh, it doesn't need any oil. You'll just have to carry some silicone grease, tiny tube of it to apply in case there is a lot of dust uh, in the environment that you're riding in. Fine dust tends to make it make noises. But other than that, a bit of water, a toothbrush maybe to clean out the grit from time to time. That's all you need. And as long as the belt is properly aligned between these two sprockets, you won't have any issues with it. Now I've had one belt break on me. That was in the very beginning of this bike. I brought it to the Zillertal Trail, which is one of our bikepacking routes in Austria and Italy. And um, I didn't know my front sprocket was a little loose. The belt went out of alignment. I was trying to show off on a hill, riding with a bit of weight and really pushing myself up a steep percentage and the belt broke on me. But that was my mistake and I've learned from it. I now check periodically if the sprocket is properly tightened 
and then I know that my belt will uh, keep up. So yeah, I hope that this second belt will be able to put a lot of kilometers on itself. And I really like this drivetrain. I don't think I'm gonna go back to a derailleur or a cassette or a chain setup anytime soon, if ever. And then the wheels. This is the 27.5 WTB wheel that comes with the Outback if you were to order it in the 27.5 inch spec. Uh, but we actually ordered it in the 29 inch. And the reason we did so was that we were quite attached to 29 inch wheels. They're pretty big. They have longer rotations as you pedal forward. Uh, and on this bike, they spec up to 2.25 inch tires, which to us at the time seemed wide enough. But ever since we switched to the 27.5 inch wheel set on the Outback, which allows for a 2.8 inch tire at the widest for the Bache de Wide, which we knew was gonna be tough and we wanted the maximum width on our tires. And so we had to downgrade the wheels a little bit as in make them smaller. I would just say that choosing the wheel size on the Outback is only gonna come down to how wide of a tire you wanna be riding on. If you wanna go anywhere higher than 2.25 inch, then you should choose the 27.5 inch wheel set. If you wanna keep it a little bit lean and go below or at 2.25 inch, which for a while was pretty wide for us and felt plenty wide, then you can choose the 29 inch wheel. In my case, it's a two plus kit uh, from Schwabe. These are the Hans Dampf 2.8 tires. Wrote them two plus in Baja. Might just keep on doing that, but I haven't made up my mind about two plus or tubes yet. For the time being, I'm pretty happy with this. The other important thing about how the wheels and the drivetrain on this bike work together is that you don't have to worry about swapping wheel sets as you would with a gear hub in the rear wheel, something like a Roloff or a Shimano Alfine. These gear hubs, they sit in the rear of the wheel. And therefore, if you wanna swap wheel sets, you have to take your gear hub out, put it in the other wheel, rethread the spokes, and make sure everything sits tightly together. On this one, obviously you don't have to worry about that because the pinion gearbox sits in the bottom bracket of the bike, has nothing to do with the rear wheel, and allows you therefore to switch between any type of wheel that fits this bike. In my case, I switched out the 29 inch for the 27.5 inch when we knew that we needed wider tires for Mexico. And that was easy as pie because there's no gear hub. And of course, since this belt doesn't make anything dirty, when you have to take out your rear wheel for a transport situation, you can just do so. You don't have to worry about the inside of the car, van, truck, train, whatever you're transporting this in, because this doesn't damage anything. And there's no derailleurs to bend and no um, oily bits to rub against any fabric. It's real handy. Something I've used on all my travel bikes is a rear rack. It's pretty essential for carrying panniers and giving yourself a bit more flexibility when it comes to storing food or water or any other thing that you deem worthy of carrying along on your bike trips. Yeah, we've all seen the people with saddle packs and a million things strapped on top of that. I try to be not uh, that kind of person and just carry a rack and have the extra flexibility on hand when I need it. So in this case, I've spec'd my Outback with a Tubus Logo Classic rack, which already seen a few years of use, uh, more than the bike. And you can see that on the metal, the panniers have rubbed the paint off in some spots here, and it's kind of started to rust, but that's more of an aesthetic thing. Uh, sometimes I take a bit of sandpaper, rub it off. Obviously it just makes it worse. I should really get it coated, but I like the looks of it, and I think it gives it character. Uh, I can totally recommend a rear rack, it, uh, as I said, gives you the flexibility of mind. You can carry unexpected things along on your long journeys. And uh, it's held up great for me. And I'll keep on using this one for future rides. Next up is the saddle. This is the Brooks Cambium C17 saddle with a cutout. And that offers quite a lot more flex um, for your downstairs area on long rides. I've really enjoyed using this saddle, but unfortunately, the terrain doesn't offer it in the configurator for the Outback. Uh, we got it through a custom order. Another pretty important part of this bike, uh, also when it comes to tire size, is this monstrous fork. Now this one you can't actually order with the Outback anymore. The terrain has swapped it out for a slightly leaner, 
pretty slick looking carbon fork. Uh, but in this case, we've been using this one and I wanna talk about the material of the fork and how it's kept up over the course of this year and all these rough trips. As you can see, we have these mounts on the side. So we both use uh, Ortlieb's fork packs on this fork and it's great that you can mount a mount with uh, bolts. The annoying thing about the fact that this uh, fork curves a little bit, which the new fork solves, is that there's different size bolts that you need in order to clamp these mounts onto the fork. But besides that, the carbon needs to be able to keep up with the weight. And we've heard horror stories of carbon forks breaking on people, you know, flying over the handlebar and landing in the hospital. And obviously that's not happened with us. And we have put these carbon forks to the test. In Baja California, we often had to take the bus between sections of the Baja Divide. And in the bus, you have to take the front wheel off and rest it on the fork. And we did that. I was uh, shitting my pants in the bus, but they survived every single time. There's another little story that not happy it happened, but happy to be able to tell it. In uh, Milan, we were carrying our boxes, our bike boxes to the bus to go to Kyrgyzstan. And yeah, basically the fork poked two holes in the uh, box that Belen was carrying. We were dragging it over the asphalt. You can see this coming. The fork basically got sliced off little by little, right? That was on me, <laughs> cheese, sorry. Yeah, cheese grater. <laughs> but the point is, it survived. So Belen has been riding a fork with a slightly chafed off bottom here on either side. We talked with Tutorain, asked them, what should we do? Should we switch it out? And they said, no, it's probably fine because it's made of a solid carbon material down there. So as long as it doesn't touch the, as it doesn't come close to the actual hole in which the through axle sits, you should be fine. And she was. So, so far that's been great. And I think it's the reason I can totally recommend the two terrain carbon forks uh, because they've proven to be great in quality to hold up with lots of weight, uh, lots of rough terrain. And um, yeah, still, look pretty bonkers. And about the handlebar, this uh, Outback model has been altered slightly. When we visited to terrain on the factory tour, they put slightly longer brake cables here. Because as you know, if you are a bikepacker, the roll in the front usually messes with your brake cables over at the brakes. They might even snap, they could break, they wear out. And so we asked to terrain to put slightly longer cables here. And I hope that they take that into mind for the configuration of the standard model of this Outback, because so far they're lasting great. The thing that's not lasting so well on our trips is these grips. These are the standard grips that come with the Outback. And as you can see, they're pretty worn out. We lay the bikes on the floor because we don't use stands. And so this part, yeah, it does wear out quite a bit, as you can see. I would recommend that to terrain include uh, the Ergon steel, I think, or aluminum side uh, grips over here so that you can just lay your bike down and scratch the metal, but not wear it out so much as this rubber. While we're on the cockpit, uh, I do have a quick little tip to share. It's this thing. It's the out front bike mount from Peak Design, basically a holder for your phone. It comes with a case, it's magnets and clips working together for a pretty secure fit. How secure? Well, this secure, you can basically lift your bike on the holder itself. That's pretty cool. So yeah, we'll be using this for quite a while to come and uh, can recommend it. Everyone we show it to is bewildered by its capabilities. And there you have it. Those are my impressions of the Two Terrain Outback Explore 29 inch after one year of use. Hopefully many more years to come on this bike. I uh, really, really, really like the bike. I'm very impressed by it. Very happy with its capabilities, with how the parts have kept up with all our rough bikepacking trips. And I look forward to uh, riding a lot of future rides on this beast. If you think that I missed anything, just ask me in the comments. I might be able to answer your questions there on certain parts of the bike that you're interested in. And uh, we can continue the conversation down below. All the resources that you might need for uh, ordering your own to terrain Outback can be found in the description as well. I think it's time to enjoy a bit more Spanish riding. As you can see, the weather is pretty good. So I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, see you in future ones. Ciao, ciao.